because I've always learned if you will be responsible and accountable and do everything you can, God will make up the difference. Make your life a better place, and that's oh, the best way you can help yes, me. Yes, look at that. Because if you're busy trying to make the world a better place, you are going to use force against me to make me conform to your vision of a better world. I realize there's over 2,300 verses about money in the Bible, but 500 verses about prayer and faith. So it kind of tells yeah. you, people get faith and prayer, no problem, but it's the handling of money and stewardship of your talents and time, time and resources that a lot of people have a problem with. You just realize that now is a start. You either go up or go down and it's up to you. So, instead of complaining about the situation, I want you to start counting blessings in you. My goal has always been to make sure that future generations can learn from the mistakes that I've made. And that's why my story is a long learning curve. Um, I want your story to be a fast power curve. Uh, and when I watched my sons and my son-in-law begin to grasp this, and I, I didn't, pay them. They didn't fall into, you know, they, they actually worked for nothing for the first couple of years and they learned by osmosis and so forth. I wouldn't pay them, you know, my son edited my book and what have you. Okay. But <clears throat> it's because, do you want me to be honest or gentle, Matt? Okay. Yeah, okay, I thought so. When I would meet with people and they were highly successful and uh, I would often ask a question. So how did you go from rags to riches? How did you achieve this empire? And they would begin to tell me their story about how they started out from scratch and so forth, just like I did at Kentucky Fried Chicken making a, a dollar an hour and so forth. And uh, then they were a super successful working their entire lifetime. And then oft times they would say, man, I have worked so hard. Um, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did. Well, okay. And so they would come back through the years, and then when they would retire, they would often come in and um, I'd say, how's it going? And they went, Doug, <clears throat> golly, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with my kids. They, they don't even know how to work. <laughs> and I would go, maybe you stole that from them. As a parent, oft times we think we're helping our children by giving them everything. So when they said, my kids will never have to work as hard as I did, I'm going, well, wait a minute here. You just talked about that's what made a man out of you. So do you want to take away all of those opportunities, okay? And you start accumulating this money and then pretty soon you die because most, uh, most trusts and wills, it's like as soon as you die, chunk, 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 and the, they divided it up and, and it drops in the kid's lap and some of them get this entitlement mindset. When do I get my share? Mom, dad, will you pay for it? Can I have? And that's called equal distribution. And uh, I'm going to say something here. There's nothing more unequal than the uh, equal distribution to unequals. Let me repeat it. There's nothing more unequal than the equal distribution to unequals. So, um, as a Christian, God does not give us equal distribution of blessings, let's say of health, to all of us, regardless of how some of us may choose to abuse our bodies. Our Creator gives us equal opportunities, not equal distribution. So when I began to help people uh, set up their, their trust and their family bank under equal opportunity, then my children, my grandchildren, they have to have some skin in the game. If they'll do this, 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 they save this much. Uh, if, if they contribute, if they come up and have some skin in the game, they sacrifice, they get good grades, uh, then uh, I might match them 50 cents on the dollar or a dollar for a dollar. But it's, it's giving them a hand up instead of a handout. I taught this to our grandkids at grandpa's camp by giving all of the grandchildren little jars with caterpillars in them. And they watched in awe as the caterpillars made their cocoon, their chrysalis. A couple of weeks later, they're watching uh, it begin to emerge in the measure of its full creation as a monarch butterfly. And I warned them, what will they be tempted to do when they see it struggling to help it out? If they do, what happens to the butterfly? It dies. So 
Grandma and Grandpa, Mom and Dad, we don't want you to die. So when you're struggling, deem it a privilege that God is trusting you enough to give you this challenge. And don't be a clam on the bottom of the ocean just waiting around for plankton to float to you. America was built on an eagle on a flagpole, okay? I want you to respond with all your ability instead of taking the victim role. I want to give you equal opportunities and you come up with as much as you, you respond with all your ability, which is what, what the word responsibility means. And then grandma and grandpa will be there to make up the difference because I've always learned if you will be responsible and accountable and do everything you can, God will make up the difference. And that's equal opportunities for everyone instead of just, okay, I'll bail you out. And that's the equal distribution method. I would rather leave behind in my family how to fish than just dumping a bunch of fish in their lap because then they'll be fed for a lifetime. How, how can somebody really be happy knowing they're living under the cost of living in their area? It's, they can barely fill up their car with gas and they can barely put food on the table and they might have to get some government assistance. So how would you coach and guide somebody to f use the happiness, Japanese art of making peace with your money to therefore start increasing? Mm -hmm. So first of all, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter where you start from. Uh, because, you know, you've heard of all the stories that uh, happy millionaires started from scratch. So just uh, um, you just realize that now is a start. You either go up or go down and it's up to you. So instead of complaining about the situation, uh, I want you to start counting blessings in you. You know, maybe uh, your income is low and you have a hard time uh, making both ends meet, but at least you got a job. And if you just lost your job and no money, at least you have health. And you have no health and everything. And then this is a time um, to learn new skills, uh, asking for help. Now, people who can ask for help are actually stronger than the people who give help. So uh, if, you, um, if you want to help other people, you know, uh, just uh, make sure that uh, the other one is stronger than you. So you're learning by giving. And uh, this uh, cycle completes uh, uh, when somebody receives. If, you, uh, if there is nobody receiving your help, you cannot give. Interesting. So uh, you are, uh, by asking for help, you're giving some people a joy of giving. So instead of feeling shame, embarrassment, and guilt and anger, just be there, you know, uh, just enjoy your vulnerability. And then uh, give opportunities uh, to other people to support support you and uh, you know there they will be there to to help you could be your neighbors you know I've, I've heard so many great stories of people helping one another so just you start your own story uh, also the other thing is that you have to start finding your right right spot you know your 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 spot is prepared somewhere you know if you're just getting a low low paying job you have to figure out, sit down and just sit with yourself. What do you want in your life? So instead of just uh, asking for a nice car, a nice house, you know, just sincerely, you have to uh, uh, confront yourself. Uh, why you are in this uh, financial misery? You know, you probably think, hmm, it's because I have bad luck. No, it's because of your uh, um, financial uh, uh, health. You know, if you're just overweight, it's because of uh, eating too much and not releasing uh, enough or doing some exercises. So the, the reason why you are who you are uh, has reasons. Of course, you know, there may be some bad luck in, involved, but you have to really get yourself back in the, uh, on the right road, right path. That is uh, to appreciate what you have and start appreciating uh, whatever is on, on the way. And uh, just, uh, uh, if you start appreciating who, who you are, where you are, uh, one of my students was a single mom uh, who was a um, low paid uh, secretary at a small company. And he was uh, bitching about uh, her little pay and her boss not being nice. But she realized that uh, she, didn't, she doesn't have a college degree, right? So uh, she just realized, oh, I forgot that he hired me without any skills, without any 
you know, a diploma. And she started thanking him first time in her life. And the funny thing is that appreciation toward him really changed him. So in a few months, he gave her a big bonus and then a big raise because he forgot uh, she needs uh, support and uh, enough respect. Yeah. So by just uh, sending out respect and appreciation, you get it back. So mo the more you appreciate in your life, the, the, the more appreciation re you receive in, the, in our society, that usually comes along with a, a higher pay and higher um, respect. So if you sort of move up from the, the gutter to a little bit uh, higher and higher, you will probably get to enjoy uh, the choice of selecting whatever you want to do. So try to be there so you can serve other people. If you're good at speaking, you should go uh, search for a job like that. If you're good at listening, you can be, find something that just, you know, it's suitable for you. And the more, uh, the closer you get to your, your designated area, you'll be happier and you'll be more abundant. So, you know, you know, there's a game like a, a hotter, 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 you know, warmer, cold, right? I, I love the game because the, the, the closer you get to where you're supposed to be, you feel more excited, more energized. And if you're further away from where you're supposed to be, you feel done. You don't want to wake up in the morning. So if you have a hard time getting up in the morning and you're so tired after going home, something is wrong. So ask yourself, where do you want to be to be happy, happier, and also to be able to serve other people in a better way? So if you're just doing that uh, five times in a few years, you'll be in a totally different place. And then finally you get to breathe. And then probably you go back to uh, college or get some education or get some skills and knowledge. And, uh, you know, maybe you stay in a job, but uh, you may be uh, starting your own company. But either way, you are using your skills as your leverage. So your pay is usually a few times higher than you originally got paid. And I have, you know, since my books sold uh, were sold 8 million copies, I have like hundreds of thousands of testimonials saying, can miracle happen? So, you know, my, one of my uh, fun uh, time is every, every time I walk, wake up in the morning, I have a few males, sometimes 10, 20, telling me how I change their lives. And so beautiful. Sometimes I cry. It's not a beautiful way to start my day. Of course. So, so I'm sure this thing works. So arigato in, you know, when money comes in, Say arigato or salama, danke, whatever the language, you know, just, uh, just feel the appreciation because they just let go their money, precious money to you. You know, they chose you as a consultant, uh, coach, or a company chose you as an employee. It's a miracle. Like, so when you feel like uh, almost uh, tears is coming down, like, wow, thank you, boss. You know, uh, thank you for just giving me this, this job. And he'll say, oh, really? Okay great you know but after uh, you keep sending all the appreciation energy you know it's like the, you know, if you pour a, uh, appreciation to his cup it overflows and it usually manifests in in the, in terms of uh, nice words and also raise and bonus and what can we do as citizens what can we do as entrepreneurs what can we do as people that are looking to make money and have money and, and contribute what can we do yeah. Um, so one of the one of the reasons why um, the the concept of a capital market only arose indigenously in Christian countries. Now today you've got stock markets in Bangladesh and in Bangkok and in Beijing and everywhere. But the concept of everyone putting together money to build up capital. That started in countries that were Christian. It started in Amsterdam in 1601. It started in London in 1611. But um, everywhere else, it only came much, much later after they saw that it worked in Western countries. Now, there's a reason for why capital worked well in Western countries, and um, it has to do with the Bible. And what I mean is this. One of the things we learn, which is a part of ancient Jewish wisdom, is that it is not possible for human beings to do business together and interact together without disagreements arising. Sure. You can be an absolute saint 
and the other guy can be a saint, but there will always be misunderstandings. You know, I thought you said you're going to pay me 30 days and, and now you're saying it's 60 days. He says, no, we said 60. Okay, you got a disagreement. Now, uh, because many people, if not most people, tend to want to avoid confrontation, in the absence of a Bible, countries just didn't engage in business. It was too risky. You ended up in arguments with people. Uh, along came God's book, and it says, look, I want you to interact with each other because the way you make money is serving each other. Now, there are going to be disagreements. Well, that's why the, uh, the, the one category of rules and rituals and regulations in the five books of Moses, that's more than anything else in that whole book, uh, are rules having to do with monetary disagreements. Got it. And yeah. so it says, hey, you're going to have disagreements. Terrific. Yeah. Let's get them settled. And we don't settle them with, with force. We settle them with God's word. This is how you resolve this kind of problem. Well, not surprisingly, that resulted in countries that adopt it. And that's the whole idea of setting up a universal legal system where everyone understands what the rules are and things are settled by means of the, the court. That's what makes law, what makes tr uh, transactions and business possible. Sure. And it's only when, when two people find a way to do a transaction which improves both their lives, that's how money is made. Yeah. But we won't risk that if the downside is we'll never talk to each other again because we mad at each other. <laughs> and so the the biblical system made it possible for uh for people to say hey i i'm gonna do business with you and it's possible down the road we'll have a disagreement fine we'll resolve it and we'll carry on just don't tell your wives about the disagreement because they keep the grudge but you you that's another part of ancient jewish wisdom by the way if you have a business disagreement with somebody please don't tell your wife she'll get so angry and resentful that this guy made you unhappy that she'll never forgive him. Meanwhile, two weeks later, you know, you and he are, are, are doing another deal. Everything's cool. You're right. Well, we get over these things. We sure. resolve them. We settle them. We get over them. We move on. But um, for women, it is a lot harder in general. There are exceptions, obviously, there are. So uh, what we need to do now, I believe, is to take care of what I call our five Fs. Here we go. Do not waste time with silly stuff. Stick with serious stuff. And here's another part of it you have to, to really lock in, Matt. I wonder how people will relate to this. But please stop trying to fix the world. Okay. Stop trying to fix the world. Do not try and make the world a better place. Please. Just leave it alone. Try and make your life a better place. And that's oh, the best way you can help yes, me. Yes. Look at that. Because if you're busy trying to make the world a better place, you are going to use force against me to make me conform to your vision of a better world. Which is happening right now. Uh, so it's many happening exactly right now. Karl Marx in Das Kapital actually wrote about how he'll make the world a better place when he gets everybody to be socialists. No, I, please don't make the world a better place. <clears throat> Uh, even John Lennon, late in his life, realized his song Imagine was a silly song, not a serious <laughs> song, uh, because it's a song about making the world a better place. So uh, forget that. It, it, paradoxically, it sounds as if what I'm recommending is selfish, but it isn't. Making the world a better place is selfish because you want to be the one to decide what better means. R Rabbi, do you think with God's values and principles and what's written in the Bible, does God lean, in his, he's not going to be labeled, but do you think his values and principles lean more towards socialistic or capitalistic type of behaviors? Um, so it's, it's sort of somewhere in between. The, the idea that 10% of my, my money I, doesn't belong to me. It's like God lets me work on a 90% commission. Correct. 10% yes. has to go. That sounds, if you're living in a laissez-faire, um, hardcore capitalistic economy, people will say, I'm not interested in that. What are you talking about? You right. can't take my money. Right. right. So they'll say you're preaching socialism. Correct. However, when you live in an, under an epidemic of statism, which is what we now have in the United States of America, where the president says, you didn't build that business, the government did. Hmm. Uh, or where you've got a, uh, an elected representative saying, uh, we will tell you how much money is right for you to make. Or, or to pay your employees. Oh, how much? Yeah, right, exactly. 
under those conditions the bible sounds very capitalistic so it kind of depends it's uh it's 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 a beautiful golden mean of um of 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 building a society but in 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 a in a in an unrestrained laissez-faire capitalistic environment it sounds more socialist and vice versa so um right now it 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 would unarguably promote a very strong capitalistic agenda one of the questions i want to ask right off the bat is what is the biggest impact that the bible has had in you both professionally and and personally can you share a little bit of that what led you to teach faith-based principles yeah, I, I came to the church really as a broken dude. I was making money. I started my career already in the insurance industry. By the time I was 30, I was already making multiple six figures, uh, about to make my first million dollars of, of cash flow. You know, from a kid who was raised with no large aspirations, making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines, to start making six figures, you know, it's kind of a big deal in sure, one's life. Sure. So, But at the same time, too, you know, going through all that, I was still completely broken and uh, empty and spirit mm -hmm. inside. I uh, found enjoyment in just going out and having external sources, going sure. to the clubs, partying, drinking the whole, the whole bit. Uh, that was my life. Um, and my father said, what, what are you still going out for? I said, uh, uh, you're, you're a dad, you need to be home. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, what, whatever, dad, I wanna listen to you. But sure. it wasn't until I woke up at six o'clock in the morning one time on, on, a, on a Sunday morning, driving on the opposite side of the road. <laughs> mm, wow. And a car was headed right towards me. All I saw was big eyeballs through that windshield. I veered left, almost hit the bus stop on the opposite side of the road, veered all the way to the right, and I put it my car in park. I said, What are you doing with your life? You, know, you, you could have mm. taken yourself out. Worse, you could have taken somebody else out. You know, worse, you could have been uh, orphaning your kids. And so mm -hmm. I, I decided that right then and there, I needed to change my life. And the Bible's made a major impact on my life. And, and I, I wish I could say uh, from a, a ministerial, pastoral standpoint, no, it's been affected me economically from a sure. financial standpoint, being a provider, uh, being a, a better father, being a better son, being a better leader in, an, in the business community. So I, I just felt that there is this whole conflict with me with being a person who wants to follow God, wants to cha chase after God's heart like David was, but yet still be financially successful. And having financial. So I was wrestling with that. And next thing you know, I stumbled across Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And I'm like, what am I wrestling about? It's right here. Right. God wants us to be wealthy. God wants us to prosper. Uh, these Proverbs won't be in the Bible unless God wants us to follow these things. And I realized there's over 2,300 verses about money in the Bible, but 500 verses about prayer and faith. So it kind of tells yeah. you, people get faith and prayer, no problem. But it's the handling of money and stewardship of your talents and time time and resources that a lot of people have a problem with in terms of giving back and honoring God. So in, in that journey, that's how the Bible and, and having faith-based principles kept me grounded without having to veer off on another side of the road if somebody's driving right at me hurting somebody else. Well, one of the things I like to say is that a lot of times we never find fulfillment because we tend to settle for lesser loves when God is saying, I have the real thing. Oh, um, you know, that's and it. it sounds like that's what happened to you. You had that Paul and Damascus moment, right? That, <laughs> that radical. I tell people I had an encounter with the cross 20 something years ago on the cross yeah. one, right? Yeah. And it sounds like that's what happened to you. And sure. I'll fast forward because I don't, I don't necessarily script the podcast, but I did have something that I wanted to mention and sure. you, you touched on it a little bit, but it's this idea of contentment. Yeah. versus abundance. And I've heard you talk about contentment. So if we can, let's fast forward to that real quickly. Why do you think so many Christians, and I know I've been there as a former pastor, church planner, I thought yeah. I had to be broke yeah. and, and I was behind on my mortgage and I had bills piling up and I was doing it all in the name of God because I was, yeah. I had this six figure skill set, seven figure skill set, but it was almost like I was too embarrassed or too scared yeah. to operate in it. Why do you think so many Christians struggle with that? I think with the original context of which it was written, which is, as obviously you know, but the Bible was originally written in Hebrew and, and in Greek. And so if if we translate, and you know this as a, as a person of Latino descent, as a person of Filipino descent, English yeah. being our second language, if the Bible was had original text and English is its second language, sure. right? Things are sure. lost in translation. Yep. Now, I always wrestle with that word content because people say, yeah, you're making six figures. Why don't you just chill? I mean, why well, stop being so damn ambitious, you know? <laughs> right. Like, you no, know, just relax you know, and contentment. And I've always had a challenge with retirement because that's my industry, retirement planning. Sure. Yeah. But I've actually said financial independence planning 
because according to any reference in the Bible, there's no such evidence that one should ever retire. The, mm. the only evidence was it in Leviticus where uh, the Levites at 50 some years old would have to retire from their position, but yet go back and teach and mentor and coach the younger pastors and priests coming up in the, in the tribe of Levi. And so when, when you're looking at retirement planning, it's really a, the world's way of saying, uh, uh, let us, the government, let us, some external source, take care of you because now you're dependent on social security and the interest rates of the markets versus saying, hey man, I've prepared for myself. God has provided these, uh, uh, the, these opportunities and, and I've saved the finances necessary to do it. Because if you look at the original word uh, of, of contentment, it's actually a Jewish word named salak. In mm -hmm. Salak, I'm probably pronouncing it the wrong way. All the Jewish people are probably uh, trolling me right now. Yeah. T-S-A-L-A-C-H, however it's properly pronounced in, in the Jewish tongue. But I'm just saying it for Salak, for lack of a better understanding of it, of how to pronounce it. But that word actually means moving forward. Mm -hmm. So it's not content to be chill and settle. It means to continually grow and move forward and to evolve and to, to contribute. And, uh, 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 you know, poorness, sadly, is a condition of the spirit, is not a financial condition. Being poor is a condition of you saying it's okay to be broke. I'm just going to settle this. I'm going to pass it on to my kids generationally. Mm. That's actually the sin. That's, a, that's actually the sin because God wants you to be not only blessing yourself in, in, in taking care of your family and taking your house, your first ministry, your household, but also once you take care of your home, you got to take care of your neighbor, love your neighbor, love yourself. Right. And then you, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that was my, re that has been my re revelation when reading the Bible. If there's somebody watching this right now and they're going through some stuff, mm -hmm. they're going through some stuff, substance wise, you know, internally wise, upbringing wise, financial wise, and they have certain strongholds and things that just keep them from getting to where they want to go. Is there certain steps you would give them in order to break through where they're currently right now? Yeah, I think there's some very basic things that anybody has to do. We, we're very intelligent creatures, right? God created us all. To, to brilliantly. I mean, there's we're, our minds faster than any supercomputer on the planet. We know, and, and our hearts, I think even is a greater supercomputer. That's why the electromagnetic current from our heart goes out like six feet, right? Which is very interesting when they say stay six feet apart. I mean, that's a whole other story, but uh, Whoa. yeah, our, our hearts are, our hearts are amazing, <laughs> right? Our, our hearts are amazing. So, so together, um, we're very intelligent people. If a person is battling something, they know. So the first thing they have to do is stop acting like they don't have a problem. Okay. Right? You have to face it. You have to face it and say, okay, I know this is an issue. I know this, whatever it is, is either keeping me from becoming everything I feel like I can be, everything God created you to be, or it's hurting relationships, right? Or it's keeping you from being your best at work. But especially if it's hurting family mm -hmm. or friendships, it's a problem. So the first thing is acknowledge it. Acknowledge it's a problem. And then spiritually, pray about it. Give it to God. God, I know this is an issue. I know this is something that's keeping me from being who you've created me to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of fighting with it. Right. Help me. Help me yeah. get through this. Help me get over this. Uh, and, then, and then give it to God. Like spiritually, to see yourself giving it to God. And then and the next step I would say is find somebody else. Find some believers that love you that probably already know you're battling something and pray with them. Be open about it. We, we constantly try to hide things. And the funny mm -hmm. thing is we're not even hiding it from anybody. When we've got a problem, everybody around us that no, loves us know we have that problem. Yeah. It's, it's a facade to think we're actually hiding it from anybody. Yeah. So confront it head on and get with some loved ones or some friends that are believers that believe in you and pray with them about it. And then get into some kind of a you know yeah. workshop. For me, the deep dive again was restoringthefoundations.org. That's what really broke a lot. I mean, it's yeah. that what, that's what broke the most of it. Wow. Uh, really, like new person. Wow. Just internally, it, is there it, any it healed to so go much. to something like that? Yeah, I think it's like fifteen hundred bucks. It's not even Got a lot, but really? it's gotcha. but it's 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 it's, it's a, the couple that I saw yeah. was just them. Yeah. And it was fifteen hours, just yeah. me. Yeah. Right. So it was just and very strategic in how they did it all. But get serious about it, ask for help, yep. and then pray and ask God to guide you where to go. Yeah. And then get involved in your local church, right? Or go, go at least to your local church or find a church that somebody that you know to that you know that you feel is not battling those things or has overcome those things. So find bottom line, prayer is not enough. You actually have to have some you, you gotta take steps. action. Yeah. yeah. Faith yeah. without works is dead. Yeah. You've got to take action. Mm -hmm. 
And and then just know as well that God's got you. Hmm. We have such a good, good father. Yeah, amen to that. He's a good papa. Yeah. He loves his kids. Yeah. And when we come to him with an open heart and an honest heart, he's right there to right. help us. Yep. And my life's living proof. I mean, I should literally be we dead. I that, almost huh? overdosed on crack cocaine. I literally almost overdosed. Wow. I shouldn't even be here. And the fact that I'm here and that God's done all this in my life over the last yeah. several years, it's just a testament to his goodness. I, I don't take credit for it. 